Okay, hey guys, and welcome to week 71 at the UnderwaterRealm.com video blog. This week we're going to be talking to you about some of the illusions that we create underwater to make a kind of a controlled, con finite body of water feel like the infinite ocean that our stories are set in. So we started off with our 12 away shoot. So this is uh, following on immediately from the Tintagel shoot that we did last year in October. And the idea is to, to try and take a very, very small body of water, in this case, four meters deep by four meters by five meters wide, and make it feel like the ocean floor, or sufficiently like the, uh, the base of a cliff. Now, there's a few things obviously missing from a tank of water. We're actually using the pool at CNC, thanks to Dave Millen and the team over there who have been incredibly helpful. In fact, you may remember way back week one on the blog, the first time we used scuba equipment was in the CNC pool. Very, very small, but with the right amount of movie magic, we were able to make it feel and look like the bottom of the sea floor. Now, the way we did this, first of all, we, we just had to tackle each one of the problems one by one. We already had control over the visibility, thanks to it being a, a closed circuit of water, but we also had control of the temperature, which was a really big bonus for us. We needed to make this pool look like the sea. So we started off thinking, what if we green screened it? What if we lined each of the three walls that we were going to be looking at? We lined each one of those with green screen and then just dropped our actors in front and keyed everything out and added the ocean in post. Now, what that may seem like a good idea, or at least maybe a bit of a George Lucas idea in the first place, but a good idea nonetheless, when you actually come into practice in doing it, aside from fighting all that green spill, you also lose a number of the magical things that happen when you film through a, a almost like a, a viscous semi-translucent body of water. It means you don't see any of the shafts of light as the light's flickering on the surface. You don't get any depth information as your actors or, you, or any of the objects in your scene get closer and further away from the camera. If the water's clear enough to shoot green screen, then you're just going to get a completely clear image. So we decided that we needed to come out with a, a new approach. And in fact, that new approach was a very, very old approach. We started looking at some of the techniques that were used in cinema before visual effects were, were particularly prominent. We started looking at the technique of using a traditional matte painting. Uh, a matte painting usually would just be a very, very large screen that was put up at the end of a set to make it look as if it went on into the distance. And we, we started thinking, hey, what if we could create a really high resolution image of the ocean floor from a certain perspective? where you could see the, uh, the sand trailing away into the distance and then the, the blue water falling away into infinity. What if we could take that, print it on a huge vinyl canvas, and then hang that inside the pool, covering the three sides of the pool covered in tiles, so that when we look through a lens, especially a telephoto lens, wide open on the aperture so it's blown slightly out of focus, murk the water up a little bit, bring our talent into the foreground, then in the background all you're going to see is this kind of illusion, this suggestion that the, the water is falling away into infinity. So that's what we did. For 1208, we commissioned a 13 meter by 4 meter canvas based on a high resolution image that we created in Photoshop, lined the pool with that, murked the water up, and then with the help of a local artist called Scott Gleed, who produces very, very high quality synthetic seaweed for use in aquariums, we actually dressed the inside of the pool to make it look like the ocean floor. And the technique worked really, really well. To the point that we decided that for our next big shoots, those of the year 1588 and indeed 149 BC, we were going to take this illusion up a notch. We were going to try and do it on a much, much bigger scale, in a much bigger pool, with a much higher level of interaction from the actors. So let's start off with 1588. 1588 required a, an entire village of Atlantean people to be scavenging the detritus from the battle. That meant dragging cannons and barrels and ropes and chains across the floor of our ocean set. But we hadn't actually got so far as developing the ocean floor yet. We'd just seen it in the distance. In order to interact with it, that required a, a whole new host of challenges that needed to be overcome. So we needed to create an ocean floor. We now had access, thanks to the good folks at Leisure at Cheltenham, we had access to a diving pool that was 13 metres or about 40 feet by 13 metres and 4 metres deep. Now, to shoot in a pool that size, it was inevitable that you were going to see the floor. You were going to see the floor all the way into a join with the wall. So we needed to somehow simulate the effect and the illusion that we created in the small pool at CNC, but on, on a much bigger scale. So rather than one 13 meter by four meter matte painting, we had to create four. Uh, with the help of the, the good folks at Hollywood Monster, we were able to do this on budget, which was really, really helpful. But we then needed to create the floor. Now for the floor, we couldn't afford 
the time, effort and money to, to actually dump enough sand in the bottom of this pool to line the whole thing. And actually, if we'd done so, it would have been something of a disaster to try and clear up. We needed to create an illusion of this entire sea floor to cover the whole area and make that somehow blend in with the matte painting in the background. So, after about nine hours of sewing, myself and my immediate family using my mum's trusty sewing machine, which incidentally we used for all the costumes of my first movie when I was a kid almost ten years ago, we created the ocean floor. We used 20 canvas dust sheets. These are very, very cheap, and uh, I think they came in at about three or four pounds each. We used 20 of these things, it took about 330 feet of sewing to stitch the entire thing together. And then we mixed up a paint using cheap acrylic paints and white house emulsion. Mixed that up to be exactly the same color as wet sand that we bought and tested. Spray painted the entire thing, and there you have it a 50 foot by 50 foot huge canvas sheet that took about three or four people to lift up and rolled the whole thing up and transported this to the pool. Now when this was actually laid out on the on the floor of the pool you could cover that with then a light smattering of real sand that was then exactly the same color so it would blend in. I think we put about 500 kilograms, so about half a ton of sand in the bottom of this pool which sounds like a lot but actually was much much less than if we hadn't had the canvas in there. And what that meant is that we could pile up certain areas, we could cover any little creases and bumps, and when any of our actors interacted with that sand, it created a really beautiful illusion. It puffed the sand up into the water and it allowed people to kind of fan it around and interact with it, which made the audience immediately believe that there was really an awful lot of sand down on the bottom there. But it wasn't enough to just have an expanse of sand going off into the distance. We also needed to add some rocks. So with a little bit of experimentation and a little bit of advice, we set about creating fiberglass rocks. By creating mounds and mounds and mounds of, of bin bags and, and lumps of all sorts of material, we could actually cover a skeleton in a, a light layer of fiberglass, which we could then cover again in cement to look more like a rock. And then by gluing little bits of fake seaweed and limpets all over these things, we created seven very, very large, quite convincing rocks that we could then drop into the pool. And by using a system of winches and, uh, and a dedicated team of divers, we actually managed to dress these into the bottom of the ocean floor. So now we've got Scott's fantastic seaweed, we've got the ocean floor covered in sand, and we've now got an awful lot of rocks looking off into the distance of this map painting. A little bit more of that clouding agent, and suddenly the whole thing really starts to come to life. Now it is possible of course to see all the joins and to see exactly how the illusion is working but by the time you've actually brought talent into the foreground and you've framed your scene and you've got the camera moving around and you've got your depth of field it actually just all starts to work really really nicely together and with a little bit of a colour grade it sells the illusion beautifully. So we've now dressed the set with cannons, with chains, with ropes and suddenly the whole thing comes to life. But the real question is, rather than the almost montage-like scene that we were shooting for 1588, would this be enough of an illusion? Would this illusion hold up against a rigorous shooting of a very dynamic scene that would take place when we shot 149 BC? Well, let's find out next week at the underwaterrealm.com video blog.